my dear sisters and brothers in Christ cordial greetings to you i'm incredibly happy to learn that the uae community under the leadership of reverend father matthew kandathil is conducting two special online programs named ivanin yatra and swanareek yatra on the occasion of the 90th reunion day celebrations this year my hearty congratulations to you for these innovative study initiatives thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this online colloquium i am asked to talk about servant of god mary vanius and his impact and relevance today it is always a great joy and honor to learn and share more about our most revered and legendary archbishop who has made historical impacts in the life of the malankara catholic church however i am afraid i am unable to do justice to the subject matter due to the time restrictions of this presentations dear friends servant of god archbishop gibergis mari vanius is the most fascinating person in the modern history of the malangara church most of us have not seen this great archbishop who passed away in 1953 more than any other name the name mari vanius resounds in our church His name is inscribed in bold and golden letters in the annals of our history due to three reasons as the founder of the Bethany religious communities as the architect of the Malankara Catholic reunion movement and as the first archbishop of our church if i am asked how would i describe mari vanius thirimeni in a short statement my response would be Mary Vanius was the most brilliant historic and charismatic leader of the Malangara church in the 20th century. His intellectual brilliance, academic erudition, charismatic leadership, unique visions, creative thoughts, diplomatic mindset, eloquent communications, indomitable determination, gallantry, courage, radical faith and trust in God. sagacious wisdom outstanding sanctity all these unique features make mari vanius thirimeni a legendary leader his outstanding education and erudition speak volumes about his brilliance he was the first postgraduate priest among the clergy in the malankara church he specialized academic excellence in history qualified him to be, to be appointed as the professor of the famous Serampore University he was an acclaimed academician he had linguistic proficiencies in both modern and classical languages he authored the syriac grammar text for the universities of calcutta madras and kerala he had a research oriented mindset his knowledge in classical languages like hebrew greek and syriac enabled him to discover untold mysteries of faith scripture sacraments and traditions his remarkable knowledge in church history empowered him to comprehend the historical evolution of the church and society he was a polyglot and was the approved translator and the correspondent of the Malankara church of his time. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the uniqueness of Mary Venice Thirimeni was his clarity of vision. From childhood onward, he was clear about his life goal. He wanted to be a monk and priest. After becoming a priest he continued to shape and enlarge his vision and mission. All his academic persuasions were in search of truths. 
he analyzed the actual status of his ecclesial community and conducted a holistic historical and spiritual audit he identified pertinent issues and problems and their ramifications he was in constant search for the true church the scandalous divisions and conflicts which were going on within his mother church radically disturbed him he was agonized by the existing nature of his church just a ritualistic inward looking and non missionary nature of his church anguished him he committed himself and endeavored to find comprehensive solutions to the problems of his community he identified and articulated sixfold vision statements first make every effort to put an end to the most scandalous conflicts and rivalries prevailing in his mother malangara church second the malangara church requires radical reformation and reawakening third the reunion with the catholic church will be the ultimate solution to the problems fourth there is a dire need for better education and the formation of the clergy fifth holistic education of the laity both spiritual and secular are indispensable sixth the whole malangara church needs to be empowered and awakened in regaining its missionary identity and trust dear friends marivan is there many is a product of history his perceptions and perspectives were evolved from his historicity he was a leader of his time and his leadership visions were solutions to the crises and uncertainties prevailed in his community his vocation was a creative response to the challenges encountered by the people of god his mission was to liberate them from their historical bondages and to lead the flock to the green pastures of the gospel and jesus christ as a historian marivan yustemeni was well acquainted with the history of the church he was drawn immense inspiration from the extensive and complex theological and spiritual history of the universal church he was influenced by the worldwide renaissance and reform movements until his time he was aware of the global contributions of the religious orders in the world scenario he was enlightened by the missionary movements of the protestant churches and was motivated by the manifold evangelization activities in the catholic church he dreamed that his church also could involve in such a fashion in this great country of india he was familiar with the jesuits who triggered the great schism within the st thomas community in india he was aware of the arrival and the activities of the carmelites who were sent to kerala to heal the wounds of the divisions created by the aggressive jesuits and to achieve reconciliation in the malangara church marivanius ceremony was cognizant about the series of reunion attempts made in the history of the malangara church moreover he was acquainted with the indigenous religious congregation the cmis started by saint elias chavra kuriakos and the reunion efforts historical writings of father placid podivara cmi speak volumes about the backgrounds and the factors that contributed to shaping the vision of marivanius above all marivanius thirmeni was inspired by the great saints of the universal church they are evident in his biographies talks writings pastoral letters and prayers his acclaimed solutions were threefold the medani movement he started the reunion movement he pioneered and the evangelization endeavors he animated were ways and means to achieve his 
declared motto of realizing god is better than serving god my dear friends there is no doubt that these visionary solutions and messages of mari vanis thirumeni are still valid and relevant today however they are yet to be further interpreted and explained to the contemporary society as a charismatic leader of the church mari vanios thought out of box to find solutions to the problems unfortunately the malankara churches encounter the same problems even now after a century in this situation the malankara catholic church as a significant family of the greater malankara community has a divine mandate to work for the unity of the pan malankara churches Marivanis Thirumeni compels us to spell out our vision and strategy for a united Malangara church for evangelization. Along with the Archbishop Marivanius, great missionaries and reformers of the church have shown us how to dream beyond the status quo and find out innovative and creative solutions. the sacramental and structural evolutions that happened in the history of the church will give us ample models for renewal and restructuring my dear sisters and brothers in christ we must keep in mind that mari vanius ceremony negotiated and pioneered unity with the catholic church before the second vatican council and it was only in this council which defined that the catholic church has communion of churches pre-vatican understanding of the reunion was a return of the schismatics to the catholic orthodoxy but the ecclesiological teaching of the second vatican council that catholic church is a communion of individual churches opens tremendous new possibilities the elevation of the suro malangara catholic church as a sui juris archiepiscopal church is a brilliant example of the consequences of this changed ecclesiology the post vatican developments in the church especially its relationship with the world council of churches dialogues going on between the vatican and the different christian denominations are significant all the more interreligious dialogues promoted by the vatican open up greater avenues for the malankara church to explore possibilities of pan malankara ecumenical ministries dear friends mari vanius ceremony compels us to be committed to the pastoral care of the malankara migrants all the malankara churches are facing manifold issues related to migration One third of the Malankara Malankarites are living and working outside the proper territory of the Malankara Catholic Church. The same is the fate of the other Malankara groups. The identity and the mission of the Malankarites residing in diaspora situations are of great concern. They are not able to keep up the liturgical and spiritual patrimony. and not able to involve the evangelization mission of the church isolated individuals and groups living in diaspora are incompetent to fulfill their mission when people are struggling for existential survival often they lose their very malankara identity mari venus ceremony motivates us to be committed to the upliftment of the poor and the marginalized members of our community our society is still tormented with poverty illiteracy malnutrition and homelessness casteism racism gender issues ecological issues etc are vital issues and challenges of our time My dear friends 
The relevance of Madhivani ceremony is to be viewed from the perspectives of the present time. In our profound prayers and reflections, we need to ask, are the solutions enacted almost a century ago by Madhivani ceremony still made relevant today? How do modern generations look at the contributions of Marivanius? Are the religious movements and ecclesiastical structures constituted by Marivanius functioning well enough to achieve the visions and the goals envisaged by Marivanius? Does Marivanius Thirimeni solicit the contemporary members of the church to think differently to find solutions to the problems facing our church today. If we evaluate the content of the discourses conducting during our common celebrations, we can observe that often they are focused on our notorious pasts. Among the new generation of our church, there are strong tendencies of dislike to such and unholy rivalries, divisions and politics in the church. They tend to dissect the dimensions of the past, present and future of our ecclesial identity. Good many like to be healed from the wounds of the past, especially the generations who are not familiar with the typical Malangara history and culture, Malayalam language, Oriental styles and symbols may find most of the conversations about the fights, divisions and diplomacies in the church meaningless and anti-Christian. They think that it is irrelevant to linger on the scandalous historical past. It is a spiritual violence and torture to speak about the wounded spears of ecclesial life. Many people prefer to engage in the future mission-oriented discussions rather than focusing on the past enslaved sentiments. We come across positively oriented young people keeping a distance from events and gatherings where memories of our evil past are celebrated and perpetuated. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the vision and the message of Mari Vanius are not ready-made packages of solutions for all time. Their meaning and relevance are to be ever newly discovered and articulated. In fact, his visions contain, communicate and make effective the message of Jesus and the Gospel. It is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Malangara Church can fulfill this mission and can animate ever new hermeneutics of his message according to the emerging challenges of time. When we follow the footsteps of the legendary Marivanios, he is inviting every Malankrite to be godly in character. His message of realizing God and serving his people should be our primary commitment. Dedication to the mission of the church should be of supreme personal disposition. The solution, resolution passed by the First Assembly of the Malangara Church to be an evangelizing church shall remain ever active without compromise and negligence. As the Second Vatican Council exhorts, our church must be in solidarity with the joys and sorrows, the griefs and the anxieties, the dreams and aspirations of every human person. Our church cannot exist and function in isolation. We have to fulfill our mission in communion with the Catholic Church. Everywhere in the world, issues and challenges emerging in the global scenario are to be considered seriously and we need to find solutions to them along with the Catholic Church and the global community. A collective response to the tragic situations emerging from the pandemic 
COVID-19 would be an immediate mission. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the history of humanity, we come across great prophets, saints and sages who led the people of God for certain distinctive and definitive missions. Similarly, God has elevated our most revered Marivanius Thirumeni and endowed him extraordinary charisma to reform our church and lead us into the Catholic communion. On this auspicious occasion of the 90th anniversary of reunion, we thank God for this legendary leader of our church and rededicate ourselves to the most sublime values and ideals which he taught us. And we follow his footsteps faithfully and creatively in our journey of personal and ecclesial life. Thank you very much. God bless you all.